Okay, so good morning everyone and welcome to the Journal Club all over again. Today, our colleague uh, and sister, uh, Dr. Uh, Akar, will uh, present us a very nice article and very important one about the radiology or the imaging of the post-operative knee. She did a very good job in the presentation. Let's hear. Uh, good morning, everybody. Today I'll talk about MR imaging of post-operative knee prepared by me and supervised by me. First of all, uh, I'll talk about the introduction of the subject. The MR imaging of post-operative knee now they became more common because the arthroscopic procedure of the knee now they become uh, more common instead of uh, previous open surgery. Underst understanding such uh, procedure and understanding the normal MR appearance of such uh, procedure is very important in order to know the abnormality, to know the complication associated with this uh, procedure. Examples of such uh, procedures are partial meniscectomy, uh, meniscal repair procedure, uh, ACL reconstruction, cartilage graft, and uh, etc. Overview of meniscal surgery. Uh, nowadays, meniscal sparing surgery replaced uh, total meniscectomy. In order to maintain the function of the meniscus as much as possible and to prevent the acceleration of uh, degenerative uh, change following the procedure in the future. But clinically differentiating between the pain associated with return meniscus and pain associated with the other etiology, it is difficult. MRI play an important role in uh, this uh, category. When we are doing an MRI, of uh, a primary meniscal injury without surgery, we can easily catch the abnormality. For example, in this figure, there is a horizontal tear, which is of high signal intensity in the posterior horn of the medial meniscus uh, in the sagittal and coronal image. But when we are doing the MRI on a uh, operative meniscus, especially on the partially resected meniscus, if more than 25% of the meniscus being resected, the meniscus uh, will appear to be truncated, to be small, and the part of the meniscus will be absent. For example, in this figure, uh, the part of the anterior horn of the medial meniscus is lost, and only uh, a small part of the meniscus, uh, the arrow, is remaining. Uh, of course, when we are doing the meniscal repair surgery or partial meniscectomy, there will be contour abnormality, there will be signal irregularity following uh, such procedure. And this abnormality uh, may be a cause of the pain, but may be also seen after uh, intact meniscus without uh, tear. For example, in this image, it was done for 35-year-old woman following partial meniscectomy. Post-operatively, the patient was, uh, was complaining from the pain. Uh, figure 1 or A, uh, this is pre-op, uh, there was a complex tear of posterior horn of the medial meniscus. After uh, uh, partial meniscectomy, there is uh, meniscal irregularity. There is high signal intensity within the meniscus. Uh, arthroscopy done for the patient, and the meniscus was uh, entirely normal, intact, which was not retorn. In order to improve. Look here. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, in order to improve uh, the accuracy of the MRI, uh, they did MR arthrogram uh, for the many of the patients. 
Uh, in MR arthrogram, there will be direct injection of intraarticular contrast medium. This contrast will alter the joint fluid, and we did it uh, in T1 weighted image. If there is a tear, there will be uh, entrance or the contrast alter joint fluid will enter, uh, such as so, uh, shown in this uh, image, into the cleft of the meniscus. Uh, this case was uh, uh, return meniscus after surgery. But statically, statically, they found that there is no a great difference between conventional MRI and MR arthrography. So there, is, there are some uh, specific findings that we can depend on them uh, for return meniscus after surgery. Uh, first of this, return after surgery. First of all, which is important, high signal intensity, which is similar to that of fluid in T2 weighted image. T2 weighted image, high signal intensity, similar to fluid. This is first. Second, uh, if you find a, a displaced part of the meniscus or any abnormal signal intensity from side distal of the meniscal repair. These are the specific signs. For example, this is T2 T2 uh, fat sat image, sagittal image. There is high signal intensity extending into the cleft of the uh, meniscus. This case was return meniscus after surgery. This high signal intensity within the cleft is uh, considered of return meniscus. Uh, following meniscectomy, meniscal repair surgery, there will be bone marrow change. Such change are of uh, area of localized low signal intensity in the subchondral bone with more distant uh, diffuse uh, area of bone marrow signal intensity surrounding this local area. For example, the first image, image A, is preoperative with uh, bone marrow signal are normal. Second image, post-operative, there is localized area of low signal intensity with more diffuse area of high signal intensity in the bone marrow. Uh, this change could be related to the mechanical process and will it, uh, disappear by itself, uh, itself with the time. Now uh, we come to another subject, which is ACL reconstruction. So an ACL is the most commonly uh, torn ligament in the knee. And uh, clinically, it is difficult to uh, evaluate uh, the ACL after reconstruction. MRI plays an important role in the evaluation of reconstructed ACL. Why we are doing MRI uh, for ACL reconstruction or why we do MRI after ACL reconstruction? The indication of the MRI first, okay. if the patient uh, cannot stabilize the, his knee joint after reconstruction. Second, if there is re-injury to the joint after reconstruction. Third, uh, if the patient has loss of extension or develop flexure contractor after the reconstruction. What's important in ACL reconstruction uh, is to recognize the normal position of uh, femoral tunnel and tibial tunnel. What uh, are these tunnels? When uh, the surgeon do ACL reconstruction, they do a tunnel in the distal femoral bone and proximal tibia. How can we recognize the normal position of such a, a tunnel? First of all, we will come to the femoral tunnel. Uh, the femoral tunnel should be at the intersection of the line along the posterior cortex of the femur, the, uh, the vertical line, and uh, an another line drawn along the posterior intercondylar roof. The, uh, 
femoral tunnel should be at the intersection of this line or it should be at posterior to the line drawn along the posterior femoral cortex. And it should be posterior to the vertical line. Why this is important? Because if the femoral tunnel anterior to this line, the patient cannot stabilize the joint after ACL reconstruction. The uh, reconstructed ACL will be lax, will be elongated, and the patient cannot stabilize his joint. This is an example of normal femoral tunnel. The star shows the normal position of the femoral tunnel, which is posterior to the line drawn along the posterior cortex of the uh, fe distal femoral bone. This is abnormal position of the femoral tunnel, which is located anterior to the red line, which is the, uh, drawn along the posterior cortex of the femur. This is anterior to the line. Here, the patient cannot stabilize his joint, and also we see some signal abnormality, high signal intensity within the ACL graft. Uh, now we come to the normal position of the tibial tunnel. This picture shows normal position of both femoral and tibial tunnel. The tibial tunnel should be parallel to and posterior to a line drawn uh, uh, along the posterior intercondylar roof. This blue, uh, sorry, red line. Uh, this red line called uh, blue mensat line. The tibial tunnel should be posterior to it. If uh, it's not posterior, there will be some complication. I will discuss, discuss it uh, later on. This figure shows the normal position of the tibial tunnel, which is posterior to uh, Blumen sat line or posterior to uh, a line drawn along the posterior cortex, cortex uh, case of the intercondylar roof. Uh, this is an intact ACL graft. Uh, the graft should be of low signal intensity. Some intermediate signal intensity within the graft is acceptable, but high signal intensity that is similar to fluid on T2 weighted image is absolutely abnormal, not accepted. Uh, the arrow shows the side of the screw uh, during the used uh, during the procedure. Uh, this, in this picture, there is a disruption of the ACL graft. Uh, the graft fibers are uh, discontinuous and there is high signal intensity within uh, the graft. Uh, this case was uh, of a yani, disrupted ACL graft in 40-year-old man. Now we will come to loss of knee extension following ACL graft uh, construction, uh, reconstruction or uh, flexion contracture following ACL graft reconstruction. We have two important causes, either ACL impeachment or uh, localized anterior arthrofibrosis. ACL graft uh, impeachment when will it ha happen? ACL graft impeachment will occur when the graft touch the intercondylar roof during extension. Okay? Uh, in this picture, the, yani, the graft uh, have high signal intensity within, the it, within it, but what is the cause of ACL graft impeachment? The cause of it is abnormal position of tibial tunnel. Okay, what is the abnormal position of tibial tunnel? We said that the tibial tunnel should be posterior to this red line or blue sat line. If the tunnel is partially or completely anterior to it, there will be impeachment of the graft and the patient will lose extension. 
here the graft is anterior and there is a signal abnormality within the graft. Okay, now we will come to localized anterior arthrofibrosis. Uh, the etiology of localized anterior arthrofibrosis is uncertain. It is in the form of foreign body or in the form of a local lesion which is of low signal intensity on T1 weighted image and it is better evaluated on T2 weighted image. Uh, some postulate that localized anterior fibrosis uh, anterior arthrofibrosis occur during the procedure of tunneling from the debris, remnant of bone, and etc. Uh, this patient do uh, ACL reconstruction. After three months, the patient uh, develop loss of extension. What will happen in such a patient is that the patient will extend his knee, but at the end of the extension, the joint will be locked because such a foreign body will be trapped between the distal femur and proximal tibia and the patient cannot extend his knee. Uh, here, after three months, the first image, the uh, localized anterior arthrofibrosis is small. Uh, it's also called cyclope lesion. Second image, uh, the arrowhead show that the lesion after nine months uh, will grow in the size and it's more clear. We uh, should use the T2 weighted image because of its low signal intensity in T1 weighted image. In T2, uh, uh, the signal will be high? Low. In T2 high, in T1 high, hypo and uh, T1? Hypo in T1. And hypo and T2? La, uh, hypo in T2 because of fluid, uh, no. joint fluid, we can recognize the uh, form body in T2 weighted no. image. In T1? T1, it is low in T1 and, and, and low, low, low. But and because low. T1, uh, all many signal intensity will be low, it is better recognized on T2 weighted image. This is another image shows cyclop lesion, which is the loss, and one of the cause of the loss of extension. Uh, we have also hardware failure. What is the hardware? Hardware includes the screw uh, that uh, the surgeon used during the surgical procedure and uh, the bone plug. What is the bone plug? When we do uh, ACL reconstruction, we either use uh, patellar tendon autograft or uh, hamstring muscle autograft. Uh, and this complication comes from uh, this graft. For example, in, in this image, there is uh, a screw migration, which causing injury of the uh, PCL, and uh, there is high signal intensity within the PCL. Uh, it was uh, the partial tear of the PCL caused by migrated hardware. This is another image, axial image. There is anterior migration of this screw, and uh, in the bottom uh, image, there is uh, migration of the screw into the intercondylar notch, causing uh, tear to the PCL. Of course, uh, following the ACL uh, reconstruction, especially when you use patellar tendon as a autograph, there will be change to the patellar tendon and uh, such uh, a change in the form of the thickening of the patellar tendon, irregularity of the tendon, abnormal signal intensity within the tendon, such as shown in this image, but it will appear by, uh, disappear by itself after 12 to 18 months. Now we come to the cartilage repair procedure. Uh, cartilage uh, distortion is common in the knee and it is commonly associated with uh, ACL uh, deficiency, ACL tear. Uh, clinically, it is difficult to recognize uh, cartilage repair procedure. MRI import play an important role, uh, any role in the follow-up of the cartilage repair uh, procedures.
We have two types of uh, cartilage repair procedure. First one is osteochondral autograft transplantation. Uh, in this procedure, they bring uh, osteochondral plug from the side uh, I mean, that's not uh, weight bearing. For example, for, for, from the lateral side of the knee, they take uh, some plug and uh, they implant it in the side of the defecate. Uh, this image, the red one, taken during the surgery, uh, which is uh, approximately, they take uh, 10 plug and uh, put it, it or implanted it in the side of the defect. The second one, uh, this is a follow-up evaluation in the 34-year-old uh, woman after osteochondral autograft transplantation. Uh, there is some uh, area of uh, surface uh, uh, irregularity at the site of the repair tissue. Uh, another type of the uh, cartilage repair procedure it is autologous chondrocyte implantation. What is the autologous chondrocyte implantation? Uh, is that they take chondrocyte from the femoral trochlea or uh, intercondylar notch. They grow this chondrocyte in the culture and then they implant it in the site of the defect. Uh, uh, the defect will be also covered by the bone uh, flap during the procedure. This uh, image uh, shows the stage. We have a different stage uh, of autologous chondrocyte implantation. Uh, first stage is uh, uh, first stage. Uh, there, I mean, there will be formation uh, of a soft tissue, jelly-like tissue, which take approximately uh, three weeks to 12 weeks. The second stage is uh, transition uh, uh, stage. There will be formation of the type 2 collagen. And uh, the final stage, uh, which is um, uh, the final stage, which is a remodeling stage, it take from 13 weeks two, three years, there will be remodeling and there will be formation of the tissue that is as, uh, as firm as the uh, cartilage, native cartilage of the bone. First image, there is an, uh, a defect, uh, image one. Uh, second image, after uh, autologous chondrocyte implantation, it's about uh, 26 month, there is some uh, yani, uh, increased signal intensity within the impl within implanted uh, chondrocyte. Uh, in the third uh, image, uh, there is a thinning of the uh, subchondral cartilage. And in the final image, there is hypertrophy of the implanted tissue, which is uh, uh, as firm as that of the native cartilage of the bone. Uh, what is the role of the MRI in the evaluation of the osteochondral autograft transplantation? We said that in the osteochondral autograft uh, transplantation, we take the graft from the site of non-weight bearing. So the MRI play an important role in the evaluation of uh, relation of the graft to the surrounding bone and cartilage, play an important role uh, in the evaluation of the vascularity of the graft, in the evaluation of the donor site, if there is any complication developed to the uh, donor site, and evaluation of the other complication associated with the procedure. Uh, complication of the osteochondral autograft transplantation include the pain at the donor site, include a vascular necrosis of the donor site, and uh, 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 condylar fracture, uh, condylar uh, fracture also graft incontinuity. Uh, this image. 
شو افتر اوتولوجا يعني اوستوكونترال اوتوغراف ترانسبلانتيشن فيرست ايميج there is incongruity between the graft and the native cartilage and uh, the second image there is hypertrophy of the uh, grafted tissue with a clear uh, line between uh, this uh, arrowhead between the graft and the native cartilage complication what? This is a complication. Uh, there will not be a, uh, the graft uh, will, will be congruent. Uh, not, uh, not successful. Not successful. And this is the question uh, regarding uh, meniscal repair procedure. Which one of the following is true? Total meniscectomy A has greater outcome compared has a greater clinical outcome comparing to meniscal sparing procedure. Uh, B. Through all four. Okay. Total meniscectomy has greater clinical outcome comparing to meniscal sparing procedure. Sorry. Sorry. Second, MR finding of contour abnormality and signal intensity abnormality reaching articular surface is specific. MR true. MR finding of contour abnormality and signal intensity abnormality reaching the articular surface normal. We said that it can happen with the uh, normal meniscus and intact meniscus and also with reconstructed meniscus. It's not a specific sign. Okay? Third, MR arthrography is more accurate than conventional MRI in the evaluation of rectoral meniscus. No. False. Finding of increased T2 signal intensity extending into the side of the repair is specific? Yes. Yes. We say that the specific sign is first uh, increased T2 signal intensity similar to that of the fluid extending to the side of the repair, displaced meniscal fragment, and abnormal signal intensity from the side distant to the meniscus. These are the specific signs. But MR finding of contour abnormality and signal intensity abnormality, we say that it can happen with the intact meniscus following surgery and sometimes with return meniscus. So it's not specific. This irregularity will remain? Uh, no, it will disappear by the time. Uh, second question about ACL reconstruction. Choose the most appropriate answer. Loss of flexion after reconstruction caused by impeachment. Loss of extension. 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 Tibial tunnel should be parallel to and anterior to slope posterior. posterior. Intermediate signal intensity within the graph so on high. T2 weighted is normal. No, yes, yes, normal. 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 Localized anterior arthrofibrosis found in the Kegger's fat pad on the sagittal MRI. False. 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 Yeah. Yeah. No Kegger. No it's anterior to the yes. ACL yeah. graft. Sometimes it is yes. Uh, yes. attached yes. to the distal part of the ACL. So the specific timing of uh, torn meniscus, first high signal. High intensity. signal intensity second. similar. Second, displaced ACL fragment. ACL fragment. And third, any abnormal signal intensity from the side distal to the meniscus. Thank you. Uh, I wish you a good Thank you. So.